everybody it's Catherine and welcome and uh, today I'm going to go through uh, some little trips and trips tips and tricks uh, about machine sewing um, because this is something that um, <clears throat> I was always frightened of and um, I spent many many years my story is that we had to do needlework and cooking uh, when I was in high school and I always wanted to do woodwork but no boys could do woodwork and they did woodwork metal work and we had to do sewing and cooking and I was okay at cooking but we had the most awful teacher awful um, and she put me off sewing for years and years and it wasn't until uh, what 15 years ago I decided that uh, I would go on a course, learn about the machine and then went on and did sitting guilds in machine embroidery and hand embroidery and that was a shock to me that I could go on and do anything like that because um, I just used to get screamed at in needlework and sat in the corner of the room and I used to run home, I used to run home I used to, I couldn't cope with it anymore, I'd run home and, and then my mum would have to come back with me and complain, she was so evil to me this woman and I kept bending needles and I kept getting it wrapped round and um, to me then this was something you wouldn't dare touch so going on that little course of just finding your way around the machine has sort of really set me for you know the rest of my creative life really and uh, so I just wanted to pass uh, a few things on I know quite a few people were asking me um, when I'd sort of did a few videos before that have disappeared which is a shame um, about machine and anything any tips so this I've got two machines um, my very first machine blew up because it had so much use and as I say this was 15 years ago and basically I bought a cheap £40 machine unknown brand it was from uh, one of our supermarkets here Aldi and uh, and actually uh, every now and again they do do bargains on on uh, sewing machines and um, <clears throat> I sort of started with that even when I first went uh, to college to do my city and guild, I'd still got this little cheapo that that didn't do very much. I think it did straight stitch and you could get... No, I think it only did straight stitch, to be honest with you. Um, and I suppose what I'm saying is that you don't have to start out with anything really expensive. And there are some little practically handheld ones. If all you want it for is to do a little bit of stitching around some paper for your junk journaling, you know, why go to the expense? Um, so I then treated myself to, uh, at that time, which was, I think I paid something like £250 for it, a Janome. I can't even remember the make. It's now at my son's. Um, it, it's still going strong actually so it's 15 years old and it's still going strong um, because Janome was the um, the brand that they always used in colleges and they still do around here and actually I love Janome um, never let me down my latest one I'll show you that probably next week is a brother uh, a bit more technical a bit more singing and dancing um, but uh, this one probably a couple of years old I think it's three years old um, because I'm part of a craft group and we mainly do quilting things like that uh, my old Janome machine was very heavy and so I bought this one and it's easy you know it's a lot lighter easier to transport and is an excellent machine for the money and to be honest people think oh I've only got a few stitches I can hardly do anything it's surprising what you can do for quite with quite an inexpensive sewing machine if you know know more about it so this one is the Janome 2060 and <clears throat> nothing special about it no bells no whistles it's not computerized it's got a side loading pocket I mean my brother's got a top loader but side loading pocket uh, just like years and years and way back in the 70s when I was at high school um, all the machines were old singers side loading pockets um, 
So basically, if you know your way around your machine, this is more than adequate, more than adequate for junk journaling. Um, and so, yeah, don't go out, spend loads and loads of money. This is about £99. Um, so really, anything from 50 to 99 you can still get a really decent machine. And uh, I do recommend you know me, it's a very good brand. You get a lot for your money and um, they're easy to get. Um, I think more so in, in the States, you're more brother orientated. I think here in the UK, it's easier to get them... Um, how can we say, to get them serviced um, without sending them away, shall we say. That's what I found anyway. Okay, so get to know your machine, read your instructions. Now, I'm all right saying that. I, uh, David will tell you, my husband will tell you, I'm the worst one for getting a new gadget, getting something new, and oh, I'm away. I'm very impatient. <laughs> I don't read instructions um, because he's a civil engineer or was a civil engineer. Um, he, he's got the precise brain and actually I, is good for me because he'll read the instructions and he'll everything straight and measured properly. Whereas me, I'm in there. Oh, what's this doing? I'm, yeah. <laughs> so this one, and it's great because it's got two places for, for you to put your thread. Now, there's a couple of things that's useful about this. One, you can have your main thread on that you're sewing with and you know when your bobbin runs out and I think, oh crikey, and that's the problem with the, the, the brother I've got now. You've got to undo everything and undo your, uh, your unless you've got another bobbin in exactly the same colour and um, <clears throat> it's a bit of a faff. So what you can actually do, let me get another see if I've got there my fancy threads and um, David can you just pass me one of them uh, threads off there please yeah that's fine thank you so there we go now so you can actually thread your bobbin without unwrapping everything and actually that's really handy to be able to do um, without unthreading everything and the other thing is that this can also be used and you can do it with this inexpensive machine uh, twin needling you can do twin needling where you get um, you know you get look at bottom of your garments more often than not if you buy a t-shirt or something it's got a twin needled hem where you get the double neat hemline so it's handy to have the two places to put a bobbin so that you can um, you can do that so there's two good functions you can do with this machine any machine it's the needle that's the twin needle and if you've got somewhere to to put two lots of bobbins that's a plus not necessary there isn't on my very, my more expensive brother um, but it's helpful okay so that is that little bit okay I'm just going to move the camera down a little bit now so um, so coming down to the dials that's on this particular model, um, we've got the old twisty dials, which obviously when you get the computerised ones, it's all touch screen, but these are easy enough to, to do. So we've got the stitch selector and we've got the length of our stitches. And there's still quite a lot you can do um, with just those two functions. So this has actually got, you can do buttonholes. And I'm rubbish at them. Anything that's a straight line and dressmaking precise, I'm rubbish. That's because I don't read instructions, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we've got two straight stitches with a needle in a different position. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then two buttonhole ones. So you've got ten stitches. Um, and... You know, if you're wanting it for junk journaling, for putting some fancy stitches on the page, um, for doing, you know, stitching round your journal cards, etc. That's more than enough. You know, I've got a combination of quite, oh, I don't know, 70 or 80 on my other machine and I don't use them all. You know, you just get your favourites and uh, so to me, 
you know this is this is more than enough they're not you know some of them are like in a way you've got one two three four five variations of a of a zigzag really there and then you've got one or two other fancy stitches there so this is quite nice with this Janome it's colour coded you can buy these in all sorts of patterns and colours you know it's this is the the only one it was on you know I don't know if I got it for about 80 pound it was on offer because it didn't have all the fancy colours all over it but doesn't matter does it really so we've got A and B so basically whatever you want the stitch so say for example I want stitch D which is a, a, like a honeycomb type stitch which is great for when I make uh, uh, turn the paper into more of a fabric so we turn to D in the blue um, so we go to D and then to get to the blue we have to turn the stitch around that way and into the blue section and we should get that stitch so if you just want plain stitch we're on A so you know it's self-explanatory really A and then you have to put a stitch length in now generally speaking about a two two for normal straight stitch dressmaking sewing seams together that sort of thing if I'm doing any uh, patchwork quilting that sort of thing this is a little mat my auntie made for me just to stand my machine on uh, bless her um, generally speaking a, a, a nice stitch length is a three if you're doing patchwork in um, and then four if you want to you know larger stitches you want to do something a bit more decorative and the stitch to be obvious so generally speaking we need to be the needle in the middle which is a in the middle position and we'll say a three so that it's easier for you to see and then quite easily enough we've got the reverse button there which again is hand uh, made and on the side we just have to pull that to deactivate the needle if you're going to be winding your bobbin up and uh, easy peasy really little handle for lifting it um, make sure that you've got this on the right way um, some of them are like you will do from the side so if you are doing them from the side it's always better I find it gets uh, you find better results if you have the cotton coming from the top okay so but these are the side ones let's we may as well have that on the go as well in case we i keep wanting to put it through that bit right okay so we'll go further down now then and have a look at um have a look at the uh, how we put the bobbin in and everything now I do apologize if we are teaching you to if I'm teaching you to suck eggs um, it's not meaning to say I know everything about all this and uh, you know it, it is quite seems basic but you know these basic details not being shown them not being given them is what stopped me doing any sort of sewing from the age of 14 right up to me you know 15 years ago um, and that's a long long time to be scared of a sewing machine just for the sake of somebody being patient showing me you know things that could go wrong or why my needle was bending or why everything was like a, a bird's nest underneath um really looking at it now as an adult she was a rubbish teacher she, she you know she had no patience and uh, she didn't want to uh explain to me why i kept doing it wrong and i just sat there in heaps of tears um and uh yeah it's uh, it's not fair is it and also you know just understanding a few basic things can really give you that confidence to experiment a lot more with your machine okay so let's get on to the threading so we'll pull our arm out so as i said before this is a bottom thread machine and oh crikey this is this is used to be the bane of my life and I used to think oh I hate it I hate sewing I used to get all tangled up in here it was all dropping to bits so let's try and make it as easy as I can for you um, 
Okay, now the the shuttle, uh, the bobbin. Um, it does make a difference if you use the bobbins that are made for the machine. Not so much so, I don't find so much so with the front loader, but certainly when you come to the top loaders, and I certainly have noticed it with my brother machine, is if you don't have the, the bobbin, because I just get cheapos from, in, you know, from eBay or whatever or Amazon, uh, it rattles about quite a lot and doesn't th fit as snugly. Uh, so yeah try and use the plastic bobbins not metal bobbins now um metal bobbins were the the bobbin that came with the old singer machines and if you've got an old uh old machine like that then use the metal bobbins but don't use the metal bobbins with newer machines because it's they spoil them they spoil them, they cause damage. So we're into the plastic nowadays. And here we are. This has got a bit of uh, this has got a bit of wool on it already, thread on it. Okay. Now the thing to remember when you're doing a front loader, and this is something I never could get my head round, um, is that you always need to have your thread to the left. Always have it always have it to the left okay and here we've got our and I used to oh, they're still fiddling now I'm still not great so we open this up and that's how we put it in because I've got my glasses on I have to take my glasses off to see close work see still fiddly for me now okay so we turn it round and you turn it round and the idea is that you have your thread to the left and it's coming round the top and you put this into there and what you do is you thread it round and in. Now if you threaded it right and this was a tip that they, they, they showed me if you threaded it right that won't all come unraveled okay let's see if I can do it wrong and see if it proves the point Say I'm doing it from the uh, right. See, I'm throwing itself at me. From the right, and you go like that. Yeah, and you go, you go like that, and it's all over. So that was one of the, a really great tip, and I'm sure most of you already know this. You know, you've been threading your machines and doing it, but if you've been finding that often it gets tangled in here. It may well be that you've just not threaded this. You've just not threaded this from the left and it causes loads of problems. So top left, bring it around and then click it in there. And that is now secure. OK, now then, then we turn with the hook at the top. And again, everything has to go from the left. OK, it needs to be on the left hand side when we put it into the machine. OK, so I'm even forgetting now because I don't use this. This is my craft machine. I think that's round. Let's see. And you'll find as well, if you threaded it right, you won't get it all falling out when you're trying to put it in. So we put it in till it clicks. OK, we're going to thread our machine. So with this one, there's no hooks or anything on the back to thread. And we're going round the tension, we're threading it through there and on this one it's, it's got a little hook there. Now the other tip that somebody taught me, always cut your thread on a slant. If you cut it on a slant it's so much easier to thread it. Let me press the foot down because I've got my big press up foot on here at the moment. Okay. That's me half blind in my left eye, so it's easy enough. Okay, now we want to bring our foot up. Now, I was going like that to press because I'm that used to having a push button one. So what we need to do with this is we, we bring it towards us and we lower it and swing it back. And can you see? This has now come up. And I'm sorry if, it, you know, those of you that are expert machinists and we take them through to the back. Job done. 
So if you remember, left, 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 left. So if you remember, you cut them to the left, everything to the left, um, then you know you know that your shuttle is threaded properly. And then obviously they're both taken to the back. And I just need to put, hold it out of the way. Sorry, we're trying to film this. I mean, as you know, <laughs> we're not expert camera crew. It's good job I've got David. Right, okay, so that's there to the back. Now, the other thing, and I've this is something that will really help you with your junk journaling, is we sew a lot of paper. And so materials, materials of different thicknesses, we do uh, lead pieces and also paper. Now, I've heard loads of times some people say, oh, crack it, my machine, it, it's struggling. It doesn't want to go through all these layers or it doesn't want to go through leather or... And the reason why is that you need to put the right needle on for what you're sewing and the right presser foot for what you're sewing. It's as simple as that. And what you have to remember is that the higher the number of the needle... In, in standard needles of your machine, the larger the point is, the larger the hole it's going to make. So, for example, if we're just going to sew, let's have a go at sewing this. There then, sorry, I have to go in front of the camera to lower that down. So if we're just going to sew this paper. That is, can you see there, it's getting a bit tangled in there and the reason why, there's two main reasons for getting a bit of a wasp's nest on the back is one, you've not threaded your machine right, so just double check that you've threaded your machine right and it's gone through all the little, all the little hooks and, and it's gone right and the other thing is the needle or this could be that your tension is wrong. Now, in this case, I've got the tension on number four, which is often I don't have to alter it unless I'm doing anything fancy with this. So I can't remember. This has just had a needle for quilting. Uh, I think this will have a quilting needle in it. So it got, it got okay, but we've got a bit of a rat's nest at the beginning. Okay, so if you're just going through thin paper like this, and yeah, it's okay for what we need if you're going to stick that down. If you're going to stick that down, you don't care what it's like underneath. But if it's something that you want to look a bit neater, it doesn't hurt to, to have the right needle for the job. So I just want to talk a bit about needles. I'm just doing some different needles out. And I can't find my twin needle at the minute. Um, so generally speaking, I don't always buy the expensive needles, to be honest with you, the universal. Um, so, just trying to get it so you can see. Okay, universal needles. So they start at 70 with this set and they go up to 90. And the basically, these are basic for dressmaking, uh, for cotton materials and I, I generally would recommend that if you're just going through one layer of paper or um, you know just a couple of layers of paper 70, 70 is, is just about right um, and I know you think oh well I'm junk journaling it don't really, I'm not bothered if I don't change my needle it, it does make a difference to your work. I mean, I'm, worse, I'm as bad as others. I've got one on my brother machine and, and it's been on there forever because I'm thinking, oh, I'm only doing paper. I'm only doing a bit of card. So, yeah, finer point makes a smaller hole. Because the, the thing is, once you start getting into your fancy stitches, um, the size of the hole does make a difference and have you ever had where you've done a fancy stitch down the edge of the paper and then it's all ripped um, this is this is notorious for it my honeycomb um, it perforates it so if you, unless you want it perforated you know it's the size of the holes and they just drop to bits the paper drops to bits so I recommend a size uh, 70 needle if you're just doing plain paper thin paper no layers Okay, now 
obviously if I'm trying to see if I've got a quilting needle here which I haven't don't know any quilting anyway if you're doing any quilting you will get them like this this is embroidery so if you're doing any machine embroidery then use the embroidery needles if you're doing a bit really fancy intricate pattern following round say you've drawn a few circle uh, well, squares saying you want to follow it round and do something a bit fancy then you might want to use an embroidery needle this is an embroidery needle just a different make different sizes so again depending on what you're using we start at 75 up to 90 so it depends on the thickness of what you're using then we can go up a notch and we can go up to jeans so if you're using loads of layers loads of layers in your project and you've got a mixture of paper material you know say it's a cover and you've got quite a few layers then quite often I will use a jeans needle and again look at the size I go from 90 to 110 for really thick if you imagine if you've got a couple of layers of jeans that you're trying to sew and it's really the thick denim then you want to size 110 um, but if you you know if you're doing some layers of, of thickness uh, 90 will be fine and then after that we have leather needles now I do have them but I think there must be in another box somewhere so you can then go up to leather now a little tip that I learnt recently uh, by watching there's a there's a um, there's a girl on uh, YouTube called Natasha Makes Natasha Makes and she used to be on uh, her chander and the other big crafting channels and now she's working for herself and um, so you can get some bargains with material and stuff and some really good tips so go and check her out um, I found this out recently that if you then go up to a leather needle do not use a leather needle on pleather now I I did I thought oh well it's pleather it's the same sort of stuff no because apparently the needles for leather have a, a cutting action as well there's a small blade in it and there's more of a cutting action as it's going through it um, so that you can get through the thickness the real thickness so leather only the leather ones if you're wanting to get through pleather and it's quite thick then you know of course you can just use uh, a high number 110 say universal needle or you can use your jeans needle now the only other ones that I want to point out are microtex needles and um, there's some if you're using anything metallic there is metallic needles I've got everything but I don't know I don't know where I've put the metallic ones so for example I'll just I've got some metallic threads here say you want to you're doing a project you're doing a journal and you want to put some metallic thread on you will get in a right old mess if you use a normal needle you can get away with it <coughs> just for a small project but we're talking you know if you want to follow the gold standard of using machine just get the right needle they're not expensive to buy a pack of needles you want a metallic needle because what you will find is um, I don't know if you've found if you've come across across this the needle keeps coming unthreaded oh and it drives you crazy and you think why is this needle I'm mid mid doing a project and the needles come unthreaded again often that's your needles wrong and certainly it's something that happens a lot so you get a right old wasp's nest and uh, it happens a lot if you're using metallic threads so metallic threads use a metallic needle I know it's a lot of faffing and you think well do we need that for junk journaling perhaps not but you know you might decide that you're going to make a pouch to put a journal in you know a, a, a lovely fabric pouch and you want to sort of sew it more neatly and then finally I want to show you the Microtex needles now where are they got some here somewhere yeah these are very sharp very fine pointed um, and the thing with Microtex needles is that you know if you've got a bit of uh, for a blingy material so any material that's uh, got any sparkle in it that's got a bit of stretch in it you know that those stretch fabrics that uh, like gold lame type and the stretchy um, 
you will get the best results if you use a Microtex needle. Um, you know, it's two minutes to change it, you know, but it doesn't matter so much, say, if you're just sewing straight, you know, you're just sewing some paper and it doesn't matter as long as it does what you want. It doesn't matter if you've got, you know, if you've not got any fancy needling, just make sure it's the right size of universal. But the two main, well, four main things is leather, use a leather, leather needle. Pleather, don't use leather. You can use jeans or a high-end universal have the uh if you're using metallic threads use a metallic needle and uh if you're using stretchy blingy fabrics use a microtex needle and you'll get the best results uh otherwise you know you can end up with it all raveled up and i i've i've been there and i've felt like packing it in and thought oh i'm not doing this i hate it <laughs> and and it's quite simple you know needles are important and then the final thing i just want to mention which you will find useful is the presser foot now on here this is a fancy old singing old dancing well it's not you, this was a cheap one if you get the Janome one it's about 50 pound but uh, this is one I just got for Amazon and it's great and if you're new to sewing and you want a bit more stability on fabrics, say, and especially if you're doing uh, patchwork and quilting, then this this quilting foot is really, really helpful um, because it helps you keep things straight and in place. And also it's got the right measurement for doing your seam allowances. So let's... Uh, Okay, so you can see with this, this needle that's in here likes this material, it's even on the top and bottom, and uh, we haven't got a wasp nest. So if you compare it to when we used it on the paper, yeah, so that's just showing my point that this paper, it doesn't like that thickness of needle or that type of needle, but it doesn't matter if you're sticking that down, but just, you know. You might want to do a bit of a patchwork journal. You want it to look neater. Um, so the only other thing with the, the wasp nests and everything is if you haven't got your tension right. Now, when you go on to doing machine embroidery, you know, your tension not being right and being a wasp nest might be the effect you're looking for. But let's, uh, let's just do this. Now then. If you can see there, I've altered the tension to number two, and can you see how loose? It's not it's not too bad really, but you can see that the cotton is is getting looser. So if we do that, say take it right down to a number one. And as I say, you don't want it that way. Now, can you see we're starting to get the stitches far too loose on the top. Now, if we go the other way, so if we go up to say number six, you will find that it doesn't look bad on this material actually, um, but you'll find that you start to get problems with the tension being too it's tight look you can see it's pulling tightly okay so generally speaking I leave the tension on a four unless I'm doing machine embroidery and I want to get different effects I want the rats the rat's nest the, <laughs> the wasp's nest okay so all I want to finish off with now is just uh, tips of your presser foot so you've got your normal presser foot that comes with your machine that's fine if you can manage with just that if you want to do any quilting patchwork or I find this is really great for getting your seam allowance right and 
you know when I first started doing patchwork it was a godsend because it's quite a stable presser foot you can get them for about 20 quid on uh, on uh, Amazon you don't have to pay you know you can get away with the cheaper with this and then the other two thing the other thing that I would not be without and this is the quilting foot and can you see that the quilting foot has a big spring and this goes through layers and layers and layers so if you've got quite a few layers to a cover and you're really struggling to get it all going underneath then treat yourself to one of these quilting feet because they, they're standard you can put it on your cheap machines you don't have to have the you know you don't have to think that you've got to have one of the expensive machines to change your presser feet this has got a spring on it and you know if you're doing some mixed media covers and there's loads of layers that you want to sew round this is a godsend it makes all the difference so yeah if you can afford it treat yourself to one of the uh the, the patchwork quilting foot this is a quilting this is a quilt this is the quilting <coughs> sorry the spring loaded quilting this is five eighths of an inch i think foot and and then this one which I did get and it's cheap and nasty and I don't like it because I don't think it'll last but this is what your machine embroidery foot will look like and for years I managed to I used just this I used this one for doing machine embroidery as well uh, but you can see it clearly if you've got a horseshoe bottom so you know I think you can manage with your standard presser foot with just buying the spring loaded quilting foot and that will get through you know I make really thick I'm trying to find if I've got one on here that I've uh, I've better put them all away now I've done some I've painted on oh Sorry, I'm uh... Say for example this. You see that? Yeah. And you want to get through quite a lot of layers and you've got some thick burlap on there. This is a godsend. You know, it's it's great. So there we are. That's a quick uh, a quick few tips and tricks that hopefully will make a big difference to you using your machine and hopefully giving you the confidence to to use it in your you know in your creativity and your crafts and your junk journaling and uh, uh, I wouldn't be without it and be, I can't believe that I went from somebody who used to run home crying every time I had needlework when I was you know in high school to somebody that that you know I can do machine embroidery and all sorts of fancy things now um i never would have believed it so you know have a go please if you've got any questions if there's anything that happens with your machine or when you're doing things with your journaling and you get this you know uh, wasp nest then please you know ask me down below or you can email me and uh, yeah i can help where if i can help i will do um so hope you found this useful um hope it makes you understand your machine a little bit better and as I say just change your needle change your needle often after each project if you can afford to um, it will make all the difference and I know we're junk journaling we want to be scrappy do half the time and we don't want it to look neat but still you want to be able to do it easily without it all getting tangled up and, and having to stop your filming so you can you know cut a load of rubbish the other thing that i find is that i get the material stuck down here in a chunk and you have to disassemble everything now that's i still do that so <laughs> anyway thanks for joining me today um and i'll see you again next video stay safe bye for now bye